Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. Yes, I know I look like I'm wearing rouge. <laughs> I promise I'm not. I don't know why my cheeks, like in the last 20 minutes, have just started getting really red. I don't know why. So hopefully I'm not having an allergic reaction to something. Not rouge. I'm not trying to look like Miss Piggy, even though I probably, yeah, do. I don't know. Anyway. I know I always have these long, boring, talkative intros, and you guys don't like them, but hey, that's how it goes with me. Uh, and this is going to be kind of just a ramble, trying to collect my thoughts, talk with you guys, get feedback from those people who watch my channel, what you guys think and feel about what I'm about to say. Um, so those of you guys who follow my channel, you guys already know that I even though I would say by today's standard, I would be considered more right-leaning, um, I have always tried very hard to not end up being in like some kind of bubble where I only listen to certain pundits, certain topics, like only watch like Fox News or only watch CNN or MSNBC or, you know, like that's something for myself that it's always been very important to me to not do that. Um, because I don't want to be somebody who does only listen to talking points that don't challenge my personal views and opinions that's one of the reasons why I always say like I always want comments from you guys because I know that everybody who watches my videos agrees with me and uh, I am going to debate the ones that I don't but it's partially because I do want to expand my horizons as much as I can uh, I find it really dangerous how bipartisan we are becoming more and more and more you know i would say that for most of my adult life if somebody would have asked me about my political or social beliefs i would have always said i'm a centrist i'm like a moderate you know with with fiscal right leanings like in terms of fiscal i've always like my whole adult life like i was in i studied economics i was in the stem fields like i'm sorry I don't think that capitalism is the perfect thing ever, but I think in terms of taking into consideration the human condition and the way humans are, which is intrinsically selfish and wanting for themselves, uh, it's the best that we have. It's the best that we have. Uh, so I've always been right, right, right on that. But in terms of social issues, all this kind of stuff, I've been like, there are certain things I've always felt very right about, and there's things I felt very left about. Uh, I will, like, I, for those people who follow my channel, you guys already know, I think there's been a lot of things that have come out of the left probably within the last five years that I just can't personally connect with on any way, shape, or form. And that would probably have put me to a place where I would now be considered also socially more right-leaning. Uh, but like I said, I still try to always put myself in a position where I'm looking at different standpoints and ideas from different people. Uh, that's just something that's personally important to me. So, you know, I watch some Candace Owens. And then I watch some Samantha B, and I watch some Ben Shapiro, and then I'll watch The View, you know. And I, so I don't know what what brought this up today. I, like there was some kind of clip that came up about uh, from Dave Rubin. He's somebody I don't watch a lot. Um, but I watch like there's occasionally there's videos of his might mommy not so much because not, not so much what he's doing now I actually really enjoyed it more when he was doing more interviews because he interviewed a lot of people that I thought were really interesting like Ayan Hirsi Ali I thought was a really interesting person like he'd interview a lot 
I do think Jordan Peterson is a very interesting person, and he interviewed him a lot. Anyway, not the point. And somehow, I don't know why, uh, I saw a clip from him. I didn't even watch that clip, but then it reminded me of somebody that I did used to really like on YouTube, and this person's name is Josephine Matias, or Matias, uh, who really didn't even have that many videos up, but she blew up like overnight. I don't know like if everybody knows her. She maybe like, I don't even know when, maybe like 2017, 2018. Like she posted like 10 videos and she just had subscribers like crazy. And um, at the time, the videos that she made were more in line with what I would say conservatives values were so i think a lot of conservative people just really latched onto her which i also say as much as i enjoy candace owens i don't agree with her on everything but as much as i enjoy candace owens i think a lot of what makes candace owens something that a lot of white people do latch on to is because she's black and she's a woman and she's still conservative and that's just not something you see very often because most black women and most black people and most gay people and most trans people and most hispanic people you know they all are left and so i think like with josephine Mat matias or matias i'm sorry i think the fact that she was also kind of giving more conservative talking points also gave her a lot of people really quickly uh and she was on Dave Rubin. And I remember there being some kind of drama between them. I don't remember, like, how, but, like, basically she was on Dave Rubin. And within, like, six months of being on Dave Rubin, she all of a sudden decided, and she very publicly on Twitter also said that Dave Rubin is fake and that uh, and that so many of the people, Blair White, and I don't know, she called, up, she called out a couple of people as being, like, fake and everything that the right says is fake and... and I don't know, stuff like that. And then she kind of disappeared off of YouTube. She's still not on YouTube again. But I don't know why. It's like, you know, here it is. Long, long intro. I, I swear I have a point. But like, uh, she, I kind of was thinking about her again today because I did really like a lot of the things she said. And she did seem authentic and level-headed. And then today I saw that she did an interview with Vosh. And uh, for those of you guys who don't know Vosh is, he's a very, very left-leaning pundit uh, i don't watch him generally not because i'm not open to listening to him but i don't like his video style the same way a lot of people don't watch me a lot of people watch one of my videos and never watch them because they don't like my video style because i'm very stream of consciousness i'm very tangenty I'm, I'm like <laughs> i take a long time to get to the point and that's not everybody's thing so a lot of people they don't enjoy watching my videos which is fine and so i also just don't really enjoy the structure of his videos it just kind of just the few times i've tried watching him i'm just like Ugh, this is boring i can't get into it but anyway in she was doing that interview and she said a couple of things that i thought were really the interview to me was really s strange and it brought up a lot of things that i've kind of that i think is one of the reasons I'm doing a really bad job of saying how this connects. So, okay, so my last video where I, where I reviewed um, the documentary, What is a Woman? And I had one person comment on the fact that he couldn't even watch my video because he was just like, get to the point, you're boring or whatever. No, he didn't say that. I don't want to make him sound worse than he was or she. Uh, but, he, but he or she made some kind of comment about like, get to the point and or... You know, and then there was kind of comments going back and forth between me and this person where I was kind of like, you know, it depends on what your point is for making content. Like, are you trying to make content to get subscribers, to make money, to get, uh, you know, people sponsoring you and all this kind of stuff? And I'm not here for that. Uh, I That is not why. I, and, be, and because now connecting it with what, with, Josephine Matias was saying, she was kind of like, um, I think if you do make YouTube videos and you become dependent on them for income, for sponsorships, or just because you enjoy the fame, 
you are kind of more or less forced into one of these binary camps. And then you are forever kind of forced to just go along with whatever the talking points are from that party because you've now established this base. And if you say anything that goes against that base, they're going to abandon you and you're going to lose revenue. And it's really hard. And this is why I say why I don't believe in a communism or anything like that, because people are so easily corrupted. Humans are so easily corrupted. You know, once we've tasted wealth, once we've tasted power, once we've tasted influence, you know, we are pretty much willing to do anything to retain those things. And, you know, so she was saying something about how, some of her opinions have kind of changed and then, you know, all these people kind of backstabbed on her and they turned on her and all this kind of stuff, which I think is such a fair thing. I think one of the hardest things to do in the world that we live in right now is to be nuanced. That is such a difficult thing to do because nobody wants to hear the nuanced anything. Nobody wants to hear even me say something like, I have no problem with trans people as long as they don't expect me to see my reality different and their lifestyle doesn't impact anybody else. That to me is a nuanced stance to it. So become a, if you're a man and you want, if you want to start looking and dressing and acting like a woman and wanting people to address you as a woman and those people who are willing to do it, great. Those people who are not willing to do it, it should also be great. Um, but don't use women's locker rooms. Don't go into women's sports. Don't go into women's prisons. And we're fine. And to me, that is a nuanced topic. But it's like you're not even allowed to have that anymore nowadays, right? It's like you either have to just be like, the whole thing is wrong. Everything is wrong. Everything is wrong. Or you have to just be like, it's all okay. It's all okay. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so anyway, like that was like the first thing that I really liked in the way she she was saying that be, and but like the, as the interview progressed i thought there were, there was a lot of things that they discussed which i thought was so i think this is where so many people maybe this is part of the reason why people are not willing to be nuanced anymore or why nuance is disappearing is because everywhere you turn i feel like you just see insincerity Everywhere you turn, everything is insincerity. It's disingenuousness. Nobody has integrity anymore. Nobody's willing to be nuanced anymore. Nobody's willing to discuss anything anymore. You know, everything, it's just all so insincere. So like one of the things that this Vosh guy said, and it was just so weird to me because exactly what he said is literally what the right says. So he's far left. And like you will listen to far right pundits and they say the same stuff. And so it's like, so Vash made this point about like how people on the right are just constantly trying to be the victims. They're just constantly trying to be the victims and how that's annoying and it's stupid. And if, if you're constantly trying to victimize yourself and there's no progression in anything, and then that's the exact same thing that the right is saying about the left. Like they're all trying to be victims. And it's kind of like, and I'm kind of like, okay, how can these two parties that are opposing themselves both be making the same argument for each other. You know what? Like, it's just such a weird, bizarre world we live in now. Then they were talking about, like, how... Um, or maybe that... No, I didn't see that on that. I saw that on something else. Like maybe on Samantha B. And Samantha B was saying something about how horrible... What is the guy who owns Facebook? I forgot his name. But, like, how he is in league with the right and like everything that the left put up is put as fake news and it's and it's and it's taken down and people who have progressive views are discriminated against on Facebook and then you talk then you see anything from the right and they're like the Facebook it's all about for the left and all they do is discriminate against us and they take all our things down and I'm just kind of like it's just, it's just actually kind of, I think, like I said, I think everybody is just at this point now where we're just like, who the fuck can we still believe? Who can we still believe? What statistics can we still believe? What stories can we still believe? So one of the things I know I hear all the right, all the time, the right pundits say is about how, you know, you, 
these protests were staged and there was actors there and it wasn't real things. And then like now you see, and then I was just listening to that interview and then Josephine, she made the claim that when all that outrage happened with Jordan Peterson at the university, that all those people that were outraged were actually actors who were on the right and there wasn't people from the left and it was all staged and it was fake. And I'm just kind of like, I was like, if this is true, if this is true, either from the left or from the right, literally, what the fuck? What the fuck? What is the point of any of this anymore? What is the point of any of this anymore? I mean, we're basically saying that if we see something on the news that comes from the left, it's going to be staged and it's going to be fake statistics and it's going to be victimhood from their side. And if we see anything all from the right, it's going to be staged and it's going to be fake and it's going to be victimhood. And it's kind of like, well, who, who do we, who do we turn to anymore? We can't, we can't watch any mainstream media, regardless if it's left or right, because it's all pandering. It's all edited in such a way to work out the way that those people will get revenue and money and like, I don't know. For me personally, I'm just so, you know, I actually just had a friend, like with my friend, um, Matt, because he also, I would say he's more left-leaning than I am still at this point. But um, he was also watching something with Kansas Owens and he was saying that he didn't appreciate because he she was using a lot of anecdotal uh, uh, evidence or opinions to state her feelings on something and he didn't appreciate that and it's weird to me because then like him and I kind of went back and forth on it and I was kind of like you know what I think my channel is predominantly anecdotal it really is and um, there's times when I I'm I'm willing to put in the time and then be like okay so here's some stats or all this kind of stuff but I actually feel like in this at this point we are right back to where how do we trust any stats? How do we trust any media outlet? How do we trust any study? You know, every, it's so easy nowadays, especially with social media. It's so easy nowadays. They, with videos being clipped, it's a 10 minute clip and it's clipped down to two minutes to like, like you literally, you can watch like the same thing on a leftist, or on, on the rightist news, and they, it would look like two completely different stories because they edited it in a way that would fit their storyline, right? And I don't know. I'm so burnt out and tired on all of this. I, I, At the end of the fucking day, I don't understand why why we can't just all be mature adults and have policies along the line of everybody can do whatever the fuck they want to do as long as it doesn't hurt anybody else. Like why 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 is why is that so, like to me that is where I've always been like I I guess that would be where some people would say that's classical liberalism. It's like, at the end of the day, I don't understand what the big issue is about everything all the time. And it's just so much, everybody having to give their opinion on everybody else and everybody else's lifestyle and all this kind of stuff. It's kind of like, why can't we just be in a society where people could have a little bit of integrity, a little bit of consideration, a little bit of thoughtfulness, and this goes in both ways. I don't, like, this whole, like, for me, like, I, I like to bring up the, I'm bringing up the trans issue now a lot because it's, like, the hot topic issue. I'm like, we would not even be in our society right now where the trans issue would be an issue if we lived in a society where people were willing to take on personal responsibility and consideration and a lot of these trans women would have just done the right thing and said, you know what, I want to live out my life as a woman, as a trans woman, but I am aware of the fact that I am a biological man and I have certain advantages because of that, which means, you know what, I'm just not going to go into sport or I'm just not going to, I'm just not, 
going to go into women's locker rooms or I'm just uh, like, you know, if people just wouldn't, if people would just have the consideration, I think all this, all, all this drama, all these issues would just fall away. And it, this is really where it comes down to people on the left are shit. People on the right are shit. People in the center are shit. And I think one of the things that more than anything, I just, I, why I always so much talk about self-responsibility, integrity. I just talk about those issues so much because I feel like if at the end of the day, if people had morality, if they had work ethic, if they had integrity, if they were genuine, if they would actually care about other people, so much of the BS that we constantly have to talk about and, and like now and that we're going through would just fall away. Because like I said, all the people in the world would be like, oh, you were born a man, but you want to be a woman? Cool. No problem. Do you. But and then that person who decided that they wanted to live as a woman would say, yeah. And me, in turn, I realize I'm not going to go into women's sports because that's not fair. And then both people compromised, both sides compromised, both sides showed each other respect, and life would go on and everything would be peachy keen. It wouldn't be an issue. It's the fact that people always have to take advantage, always have to take it a step too far. And again, this is the left or it is the right. You know, like for me, a good counterexample, because now everybody's going to be like, you're harping too much on the left again. The counterexample for me would be about the right and this whole gun issue. Now, me personally, I don't think... <laughs> I don't think that people being able to buy guns is the reason why we now have all these mass shootings. I think it has something to do with a lot of underlying social problems that are going on. At the same time, I will say, I agree. I don't understand why the average day-to-day -day person needs to have a rifle in their house or needs to have a semi-automatic weapon. Like a handgun, yeah, okay. You know, if you want a handgun in your house so you can defend yourself in case, you know, you're, I don't know, I associate people who have guns more like with people who live in the Midwest anyway. It's kind of like, okay, maybe there's a fox in your yard or a bear or I don't know, whatever, and you need to be able to defend yourself. Um, fine. Um, but again, like, I just feel like these could all be so non-issues if people could just not make everything so much more than it is. If the left could just kind of say, you know what, people have owned guns for so and so, so and so long. This is The gun is not the fault of what is going on. And the right could say, you know what, that's right. I don't need a machine gun in my home and I don't need a semi-automatic rifle in my home. You know, that's fair enough. Boom, compromise, another problem over, <laughs> you know, like, but now it's to the point where we just don't even know anymore. We don't even know what is a legitimate issue. What is, what is actually really happening? Everybody is lying. Everybody is fake and just trying to do it for the viewership. Uh, it's such a depressing, and I think this is where I, I feel like I come across so harsh for a lot of people because I always, I, because I think people have gotten so used to being encouraged in their disingenuine disingenuine dis <laughs> I told myself not to use words I can't pronounce um disingenuity is that a word that's not a word um you know in their laziness in their in their fakeness in their wanting everything and to get nothing and to do nothing for it you know just life is hard life is hard and you have to work hard and you have to show integrity and sometimes you have to be a little bit blunt and sometimes you have to really stand for what you know is right even though it might not make you popular and until i think the vast majority of our society we can get to that point can get to that point where they actually, maybe for themselves, because society is not going to do it. But if we for ourselves could get to the point where we say, you know what, my integrity and my virtue and my honesty is more important than having 5 million subscribers and having $20 million in the bank and having all these people worship me, you know, until we get to the point where society works that way, we are going to continue constantly going on with just 
this never ending back and forth and this, I don't know, like, sorry, I don't really, I can't really put into words what this video is about. It's just, it was just such, it's just so off-putting to me how, how many people in the world, and this is not just on the YouTube, on, on the YouTube, uh, on YouTube, uh, on the news, but even like in real life, you know, I, I might have mentioned this before. My boss here is the absolute biggest barf bag ever. He has no integrity. He's lazy. He he's not willing to help. Like he's just he's just a whole, and he's completely entitled, you know. And he gets rewarded for it. He gets rewarded for it. Like I I, I went to the school like two or three times and was like, you know what? We've had children get hurt because he is actually not taking his responsibility of having to watch over these children seriously. And I was basically told, oh, you're a negative Nancy. He's amazing because he does all the kiss. He kisses all the, all the higher ups ass. So they love him and they're all, too, and they are all too lazy to go and actually see that he doesn't do his job, that he's constantly calling in sick. You know, that he's shown up to work with little kids drunk. You know, I'm just, I, I you know, and, and like, we, this is the world we live in. This is the world we live in. We live in a world where somebody like me, sorry, like, again, anecdotal. Um, I will never have a lot of friends. I will never be especially popular. I will have issues ever really climbing the corporate ladder because I care about my work ethic. I care about having integrity and I care about speaking the truth. And it's just, it, I, it's, just I, I'm, it's, I, it's to a point where I'm just like, there's like, I have a legitimate revulsion for society and humans in general. Like I, I'm just, it's just so, This is like you meet somebody and you can almost count on the fact that they're going to be fake and that they're going to put their, their own self and their own self-interests above. And that's actually kind of what we preach, you know, if, if you think about it. And this is something, this is part of the reason why I said, like, I personally also have such a hard time with maybe this non-binary stuff, all this kind of stuff, because all of it, all of it is rooted in this idea of as long as it benefits you, it's okay. As long as it benefits you, it's okay. It's okay to make everybody else uncomfortable. It's okay to make everybody else have problems as long as it benefits you. And this is how we have raised the current society of people that are on this planet. Everybody is out only for their own benefit and gain. And if that means lying, if that means cheating, if that means making up fake statistics, if that means hiring actors to pretend that they're protesting, I mean, like, gosh, can you believe, like, I, 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 I need to go to bed tonight believing that that is not true, that neither the left or the right do that, because it would be such a disappointment to the levels people are willing to go Ugh, it's, it's, ugh, it's just all so gross. It's all so gross. I'm just, ugh. Ugh, God, people are so gross. This is so gross. All right. I think I've ranted enough and not really gotten to a point. I think... I guess like my takeaway for this would be to all of you to be like, you know, take everything, everything that you see in the news and from the pundits and from pretty much everybody in this at this point in time, just take it with a grain of salt, you know. The statistics that the news bring, the reports that the news anchors and the pundits say, like <laughs> You know, I don't, I think probably mentioned this, but maybe you guys don't remember, but like my bachelor's degree is actually in statistics and 
this is no joke. You, I would say two thirds of this degree of my statistics degree was just having to learn how to make sure that the statistics, the stats that you are sharing or that you are, because like in an ideal world, if I had actually worked as a statistician after I graduated, which I didn't, I went into finance, but like it, it, <laughs> it is so, so incredibly difficult to actually give an accurate statistic. It is almost impossible to give an accurate statistic. And I think that's now having studied statistics, why I'm always very, very, I, that's all partial all the reason why I don't add statistics because it's like most statistics that are brought to us via the news, via magazines, via all these pundits, these statistics are created by people who aren't statisticians. And I can guarantee you with almost most statisticians making huge errors in how they get the statistics people who didn't study statistics are most definitely getting these stats completely wrong like i said almost two-thirds of our program was just about having to figure out how do you sample who do you sample how big does the sample size have to be you know what outliers can you keep? What outliers do you not have to keep? When do you have to resample? What program do you have to use this sample in to garnish a co correct like data or <laughs> whatever? Like it was, it was, just, it was two thirds of my classes was just like that was that kind of stuff. So you know, almost all of these stats that I see on all these channels, I'm just kind of like this is just complete. They were like we went on a UC, we went on to even if it's UCLA, we went onto a campus and talked to 25 people, and 24 of 25 said that you know being non-gender is a valid sexuality. You know, and I'm kind of like, I mean, like it's 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 just it's it's literally garbage. It's not worth the paper or the time that was used on. I'm like. <laughs> like so I don't know I've continued the rant even though I'm just like you guys just take everything with a grain of salt be maybe more open-minded to a little bit of anecdotal by which I mean listen to people's actual life experiences and uh, what they've seen and achieved and what is actually the reality versus what the news is telling you is the reality um, and form your own opinions and realize it's okay to disagree with people. It's absolutely okay to disagree with people, with friends, with family, and even if there's people that you really thought like, in a lot of things, it's still okay to disagree with them on certain topics. You know, you it's this blind faith that you have and it doesn't matter if you're on the left or on the right i don't think i have a lot of people who consider themselves left still watching my channel but you need to question the people that are giving you the information on the left and the people who are considering themselves on the right you need to question the information you're getting from people on the right because the vast majority of them are really doing it just for the subscriptions for the money for the power, for the influence, they are not doing it because they care about you and because they want to help you. Like, no, that's they don't. They really don't. Um, yeah. Okay. Long rambly video about nothing again. Just general disappointment in the world that we live in. And yeah, sorry for my Miss Piggy cheeks. I don't know what's going on. And for that one subscriber who was upset, yes, I still have a little bit of redness because I had herpes earlier in the week. <laughs> lovely. It's lovely. All right. Bye.